Good morning, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to the launch of ESCO version zero, which I'm confident is going to be much more refreshing and satisfying than a Coca-Cola zero, without any doubt at all. This is it. What does it stand for? I have to read this. The Multilingual Classification of European Skills, Competences, Qualifications and Occupations. I'm very glad we have an acronym. <laughs> Today and tomorrow are going to be very busy. If you've had a look at your schedules, it's deceptively light the way that it's described there. That didn't put anybody off. But actually it's going to be very busy. And we have plenary sessions, we have panel discussions, we have breakout groups, we have parallel sessions, the list goes on. And it's up to you to really be involved in all of those. So I hope some of you have brought your running shoes with you because you're going to be moving around from this room to the next room. Lots of sessions, it's going to be very busy. Drink some more coffee. We need all the energy we can get over the next two days. To know where you're meant to be, I would like you all just to very quickly have a look at your badge. If you look at your badge, you will see that there are some dots on your badge. These are not sort of minimalist artistic decorations to your badge. These are guides to where you're meant to go. And the really important thing to look at today is the square box. If it's green or blue or red, that gives you a clue as to where you're going in the afternoon. But more of that later. The reason we need your energy and your commitment over the next two days is that ESCO version zero is a tool. And if nobody uses the tool, it just stays there as a tool. So what we really need at the end of these two days is for you, all of you here in this audience, to feel confident that not only do you know how to use this tool, but you understand its value, how this is going to make your lives easier better, more productive and exciting, because that's the aim of the tool. And to really engage with it. It's just a tool. You're the people who have to make it happen and work. And that means a number of things in this conference. If you don't understand something, do this. Put your hand up and I will make sure a microphone gets to you in the next 20 seconds. Because we need your questions. Don't leave this conference with any questions in your head. If you're worried about something, and you go, yeah, but you know, we have this, and how's ESCO going to, you know, will ESCO be a barrier, or you know, is it going to be a problem for me? Do this. Put your hand up. I will get the microphone to you, ask the question. Don't leave this conference thinking, yeah, I understand it, but won't it be a problem? Ask the question. And if you have any comments or ideas as to how we can make it better, do this again. Stick your hand up, we'll get to you. We need your feedback. But you're not alone. If you're thinking, gosh, that's a bit much for me to do, you're not alone. If you look at your badges again, you will see that the name of your country is on your badge. If you're from Germany and you have a badge that says Portugal, you've got the wrong badge. We have invited other people from your country here. And that invitation was not arbitrary, it was strategic. And we have tried to put together people in your country that you can work with on using ESCO back in your national context. So during the conference, 
find those people, find out what they're thinking. The other thing we can do is introduce you to lots of people who have been working on ESCO for what must now seem years and years and years. They've put in a lot of effort and a lot of work and they're here over today and tomorrow for you to ask them questions. If you don't know how to use ESCO, you find these people and they can help you. And I think Xavier is now going to indicate who these people are. They're going to be standing up in the audience, so turn around and have a good look at their faces. These are the people you need to target during the coffee and lunch breaks if you have any questions. Xavier, over to you. Uh, thank you. I realize in the first part of my speech I didn't say anything particularly interesting, but listen up because this is now going to be uh, relevant and meaningful. Um, I would first like to mention that uh, we have, uh, of course, a board of the uh, ESCO, a board which uh, gives steering, gives the ideas as to what uh, uh, would be the right direction, how to get it right, how to make sure uh, that we don't go out, out in cuckoo land in the Commission by being anchored with the reality of public employment services. So for this we had a number of people and I will ask the board to please uh, do me a favor and stand up for a moment. Uh, we have, yes Peter, oh, you too. Uh, we have, we have uh, um, Wallace Gulen and Ana Carla Pereira held by Christian Lebmeyer from CEDEFOP and by two colleagues from DIGIT, and, uh, sorry, DIGICT and uh, in, Interpretation uh, to make sure that we get it right in languages. And then we have a number of them, I will not mention them all, you will find them I hope, uh, yes, in the list here. Uh, these are the people, Jeremy from the UK, uh, Peter from the German Federal Ministry, who have really a good grasp on reality and can tell you what, are, what is the rationale and how strategically ESCO was conceived. Uh, so thank you very much to all of you. Thank you for all you've done so far. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, thank you. Um, it's wonderful to have a strategy. You have to make sure that it's actually put in practice. And this is what the ESCO Maintenance Committee uh, of stakeholders and commission has been doing to make sure that there is methodological support and quality assurance in the implementation and the setting up of ESCO. This is what you hopefully see now. So this is the ESCO Maintenance Committee. And then we have the ESCO Secretariat. Uh, this is uh, a secretariat which is uh, essentially internal. It is uh, from DG Education and DG Employment. In DG Employment, Martin Levrang, Aldo Laudi, in DG Eac, Karin Van Sanden, Kuhn Norman, and in of Jens Bjornabold. And then we have a number of consultants which has helped us because notoriously commission officials always need help. Uh, Katrin van der Koyen, Vito Spinelli, Jean Taniedra, and Cristina Pereira Orcastegui. These people are the ones who have been able to support us and to make sure that ESCO was also kept alive. And that includes, of course, the external support to the Secretariat outside the Commission, uh, uh, with special thanks to uh, the IT project leader, Agis Paparantunio. Now, thank you for that, but then, of course, uh, they, we have uh, the reality check of what actually happens in education and employment sectors. And this is why we have set up already 11 sector reference groups. These are stakeholders from education and training and from the labor market that are developing content for the future versions of ESCO for specific sectors. We have 11 sectors which have already been set up, 16 that will be set up uh, soon and of course there is also a cross-sector reference group of stakeholders which develops the difficult issue of transversal skills and competencies for ESCO. I think you have the list of the 11 reference sectors here. I won't go through them but as you can see they are specific, they are the relevant sectors that we should now try to better grasp and define and for this future work of course the reference stakeholders have been indispensable. So with this I will end uh, again by uh, hoping that as Martin said just now you will really make the best of these two days because we really think that for those of you who know already about ESCO, you don't need any uh, 
uh, information, but many others, I'm sure, will be convinced when they see how ESCO works in practice. With this, thank you very much and good work to you. Thank you.